Well, this week we're taking degrees of science on the road to Baylor Scott and White Hillcrest Hospital in Waco. I've got Dr. Goswami here. Uh, we're in your cath lab, which is a pretty awesome place to be here. So for folks that may not know, what exactly is the science of cardiology? Yeah. So the subspecialty of cardiology is focused all around the heart. Uh, and the heart has a lot of different functions. So one of it, the main one is to pump blood throughout the body. But to do that, it has to have contraction of the muscle. The valves all have to work right. The heart rhythm has to be right. And so within cardiology itself, there are subspecialties. And the subspecialties can include just general cardiology, kind of master uh, of all, <laughs> a jack of all trades kind of situation. Uh, there's heart failure specialists that are uh, focused on the muscle and any weakness of that muscle. There's rhythm experts called electrophysiologists that just focus on the rhythm side of things. There's interventionalists, that's what I am. Uh, we put stents in, so we focus on the treatment of heart attack or valvular heart disease, structural heart disease, anything that could potentially be fixed uh, with a catheter uh, is what we focus on. So, I mean, one is just how amazing is the heart just in general that yeah. it can do all that, but then you know, to have something that does that, how delicate it can be if stuff just gets off a little bit as well. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's always a little humbling to, to see uh, such a minute thing like a blood clot the size of the end of a pin can take a human life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when we remove some of these clots during these procedures in this room, uh, it, you know, we can sometimes see that clot and just it, holding it in your hand, it, yeah. it's just, gives you chills. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, so like talking about what you do in here in this cath lab, so you're doing everything really minor invasive, not much invasive with it, you know, not, not having to cut open and stuff like that, right? Right. So everything we do in this room is a non-surgical, so we don't pick up a blade or a scalpel or a knife. Uh, it's done through catheters, so we either go through the wrist or through the groin. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the procedures we do in here are, uh, involve the coronary arteries, so we shoot dye into the heart arteries to see if there's blockage. And if there is a blockage, we can fix that blockage with a stent. Okay, so you're, you're talking about heart attacks and stuff. And this year, you know, cardiac arrest has become kind of in the big news with the, the yeah. Mar Hamlin and the NFL. Explain to people what the difference between cardiac arrest and a heart attack is. Yeah, so it's a good question. Uh, the heart attack itself is a lack of blood flow to the muscle. So the, the heart's a muscle, and for it to contract properly and get blood to the whole body, it, it needs fuel. <clears throat> and so there's arteries that lay on top of the heart that actually deliver blood into the heart muscle itself so it can function. Any blockage in that artery uh, can result in a heart attack. So typically it's a plaque that'll rupture. That rupture will cause the artery to become totally occluded and then the muscle won't function as a result of that. And so that's where you come in here, we shoot that picture, we see which artery is blocked, and we get it open as quickly as possible to restore flow and minimize damage to that muscle. The, the cardiac arrest itself is, is also, another term for that is sudden cardiac death. That's more of, a, of an electrical event. Mm -hmm. So that is a, an event, again, the two are not mutually exclusive. So you can have a heart attack, and then it can result in a cardiac arrest. Uh -oh but not all heart attacks result in cardiac arrest, right? Some people just show up with chest pain. But the cardiac arrest portion itself is just an erratic electrical event of the heart. So normally if you watch the heart, the top chambers co contract in the bottom, top, bottom, top. It's very coordinated, orchestrated, and very regular. If during a cardiac arrest, basically what happens is the bottom part of the heart fibrillates. And that just means instead of uh, organized contraction where it's pushing blood to where it needs to go, it just kind of sits there and quivers. There's no organized contraction. And as a result, there's no output of blood to the rest of the body, and the result is the patient collapses. Um, so, so that's the big difference between a cardiac arrest. it's just a minor arrest. little bitty. I mean, it just has to line up just right, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends. So there's a lot of different, so heart attacks caused by 90 plus percent of the time, heart attacks caused by blockage. Yeah. Sudden cardiac death can be caused by a lot of different things, right? It can be caused by heart attacks, medication, uh, a blunt force trauma to the chest or a projectile to the chest, um, you know, getting hit by lightning. I mean, lots of different things can precipitate a cardiac arrest, but the heart attack is a little more specific. So the heart attack is more something that we can kind of help ourselves out by taking more 
health conscious, really if you're more susceptible to it. There's stuff you can do to help and stuff you can do that can hurt your chances as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, to prevent atherosclerosis or coronary artery disease, which leads to a heart attack, there are five major risk factors in the United States for that. And one is smoking, two is diabetes, three is high blood pressure, four is high cholesterol, and five is a family history. And that's usually a family history of what we call premature coronary artery disease. So if your relatives are passing away or having heart attacks in their 50s and 60s, that's significant for you as a, as a, as a child of, of, of your parents, for, for instance. So out of those five risk factors, we really can't change our genetics you know, yet. They're working on it, but we can't change that. But we can't stop smoking. We can address our blood pressure with medications. We can address high cholesterol with diet, exercise, and medications, and we can address diabetes uh, with medication. So we can alter those four risk factors and try to minimize the risk of, of heart disease as much as possible. Go, going back to sudden cardiac death or, or a cardiac arrest, if you have a cardiac arrest, the mainstay of that treatment is CPR and an AED. Okay. Yeah, and I guess that's where the DeMar Handelman, having those uh, Positions right there on the you know on the field really helped save his life. Yeah, yeah, it, it really uh, kudos to them. Yeah. You know, I, I think uh, even as a cardiologist watching that, it was kind of shocking to me uh, just what happened and the fact that he got up and then collapsed. Mm -hmm. and, you know, what could it be? What could it be? And, and and it was a testament to them and their quick acting that that saved his life. So for parents that after seeing something like that happen, and I know there's a lot of people that are worried about even baseball getting hit with a baseball is that something that more just a freak accident or something that parents should be worried about with their kids doing those kind of sports yeah it's it's a very rare and freakish incident you know it i think in the in the united states so many people play sports you know that uh, we do tend to see it from time to time but you know they have a registry of these cases and every year the registry tends to grow by 10 to 20 cases a year. So that's in the entire United States, mm -hmm. pretty small. Um, and so, it, you know, it, is it a concern? I, I think it's a concern, but you, you're probably much more likely to run into something else, like another type of accident much, that's much more common than commotial cordis is the, is the name of this condition we're talking about, where either a blunt force trauma to the chest or a projectile hits the chest and precipitates a cardiac arrest. Okay, so you've been doing this for a while. How much improvement in the science have you seen in the time yeah. that you've been doing it? Yeah, phenomenal amounts. I mean, uh, if, if we look at when the first heart catheterization was done or the first stents were done in the, in the 1990s, a stent would take two hours. You know, now we can put a stent in at five minutes uh, with the same result, excellent result. You know, it's not that you're rushing. In the case of a heart attack, you are rushing. You want to get it open as quickly as possible. But nowadays, I, I think the technology's gotten so, so much better. The, 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 the help in terms of the staff in the room has gotten so much better. The doctors have gotten better. Uh, and we just do more of it. And so like anything, I'm sure similar to what you do, the more you do it, the better you get. And it's, that's no different in here. So the technology is better, but are you seeing more people coming in with heart issues just because of, I mean, we're, I think we seem to be a more unhealthy as we, you know, longer we go yeah. with fast food and not take care of ourselves and diabetes. Do y'all see more people and more issues we're having with hearts? Yeah. Yeah. And it does seem to, I mean, I'm getting older. So, uh, compared to 20 years ago when I, everyone I was stenting was older than me. Mm -hmm. Now people I'm stenting are younger than me. Mm -hmm. And so it does make you raise an eye a little bit uh, and, and you wonder where you know, the health of the country's going. I mean, with all the, the, uh, the things you mentioned, uh, I think we, we still have a, a good emphasis and a, there's a, a good number of people out there that are still very focused on their health and medications and diet and exercise. Uh, but again, there's, there's a lot that aren't, and, and I think we just need to all be knowledgeable about our own bodies, health conditions, what we can prevent, what we can't prevent, uh, and try to do the best we can. So what, what got you interested in this particular part of medicine that you're in? In terms of treatment of heart disease, and, and we talk about changing somebody's life or changing somebody's prognosis, mm -hmm. Nowhere in medicine does it happen faster than on this table. So we could 
bring people back from this close to death on this table in a second, right? Uh, once that stent goes in and that artery gets opened from closed, we've changed that patient's prognosis in a second. Whereas if you look at other specialties, it takes some time, right? If you're an, in orthopedics, you, you break a bone, it's gonna take six to eight weeks to heal. You even get pneumonia and you're on antibiotics, it's gonna be seven to 10 days before the antibiotic course is done and you start feeling better. So all these things kind of take time, but that, it's, it, it's the quickest way to positively impact somebody's prognosis in medicine. And how, how rewarding is that to you knowing that if somebody, I mean, they're on the doorstep of having a heart attack or already are maybe on the doorstep, maybe dying from something yeah. that you can jump in that quick and help them. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm still amazed by it, right? 23 years later, it's, it's uh, very gratifying. Um, it, it, you can't even describe it, right? I can't even describe it. Awesome. Well, I think, appreciate you taking some time to sure. talk with us. And uh, yeah, I've already learned a bunch less awesome, but I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure.